Hi kids, it's Leanne here with Happy Mail by Leanne, happymailbyleanne.com. Um, I found this stamp set today on my shelf. This is the very first stamp set I ever bought. It's foam. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see, but there's a castle and a dragon. This is a cloud. I use the cloud a lot, so much so that it rubbed off. Um, but I thought... I'd walk down memory lane and make a card or two uh, with this stamp set. And I had these card blanks with the cute little boxes. So I made a couple. This one here I did with ink. Um, and this one here I did with chalk. I like the one with chalk better. Um, well, let me, let me rephrase that. I like the, I like the images in the alcohol ink, but the border in the chalk. So <clears throat> today, I think when I, the one I make now, um, I'm going to do just that. Do a mix of alcohol ink and um, chalk. So let me show you how I did this. I first took my paper, my little paper with all the designs uh, on it. And I don't think you can get this anymore. Um, it's very 90s. <laughs> it's very, very old. Um, but, you know, if you like it, you could probably go on your computer if you're computer savvy and, and make one. So I just laid out the stamps that I wanted to do in the little boxes um, so I could kind of get an idea. <coughs> Let's put Dare to Dream in this little box here. The little fairy princess. And let's give her some stars. I think I want to do mushrooms along here and we'll do the frog prints here a couple of frog princes so I just laid it out like that to see if I liked it and then I took my black memento stamp pad and stamped the images I started at one side stamped them on let's see what story do I want to tell you today I think I'll tell you how my husband and I met my husband and I just celebrated our third wedding anniversary um, we uh, we met on a website called BBW Cupid which stands for big beautiful woman Cupid and I had I had had a couple of really bad experiences um, a man that said he wanted to marry me and then um, I had an anxiety attack in front of him and he broke up with me because his former girlfriend um, when she had an anxiety attack was abusive to him and he couldn't you know he was afraid of me after I had that anxiety attack which was ridiculous because I didn't hurt him or act out but it's neither here nor there um, so I had sworn off men and my girlfriend, Amy, and I went out to a Starbucks date. Neither one of us drink coffee, but we went to a Starbucks date, which was a habit for us. And um, she talked me into trying one more time. She said, there's someone out there for everyone. She was so passionate about it. Um, there's someone out there for everyone. Just try one more time, one more time. And then I won't bother you about it anymore. <laughs> so I tried one more time. And um, I went back on BBW Cupid. And the next day, Kevin messaged me. And I looked at Kevin's picture. And I this he was this white-haired 
handsome man. And I thought, oh, he's handsome. And I looked at his age, he was 55. And I thought, oh, he's 55. Well, Greg was 55 and Greg was fun. So I'll give this guy a chance. So I, um, I messaged him back. And we talked all day. I was, um, I was painting my bathroom. I think we're going to do one more sparkle right down here. Oh, let's put more sparkle over here. Okay. That's lots of sparkle for her. Um, I was painting my bathroom. So we were texting back and forth all day while I was painting my bathroom. And that was a, I believe it was a Sunday. I think it was a Sunday, if I remember correctly. Because he had Monday and Tuesday off. Yeah, it was a Sunday. She so had Monday and Tuesday off. So we started talking on Sunday. We talked all day. We decided to go out. <clears throat> we decided to meet on Monday and go out. Okay, now that I have this all stamped up, I'm going to just start with my alcohol ink markers and color it in. And I've got a variety of alcohol ink markers. I've got some Stampin' Up, I've got some off-brand, and I'm gonna just use a mix of both because that's what I have. I'm waiting for my Spectum Noir alcohol ink markers to come in the mail. Um, they are expensive, but from everything I've researched, they're very well worth it. So we'll see. Um, so anyway, I'm, I was very excited about this date with this man named Kevin. And, uh, I agreed out of, out of, totally out of character for me. I agreed to have him come pick me up at my house. And the time came for uh, him to be there. He was right on time. He rang the doorbell. I opened the door. And there he stood with a dozen red and white roses. And I was sunk. <laughs> so we went out to dinner. And I just thought, what a sweet gesture for him to bring me roses. Like, just... I, I was just, I'd never had a man spoil me like that on a first date. Um, so I thought, wow, this is really cool. Then at dinner, he sat across the table from me and he kept holding my hands and looking intently at me and just, I kept saying, oh, this is really intense. <laughs> he was just he was just intense. He was very intently, um, I'm going to do those crowns in a different color. Um, he was, he was very interested in me and made it quite clear that he was very interested in me. And, um, I had a really good time with him. Just like the conversation flowed. It was just a lovely evening. Well, I had a dentist appointment the next day, and it was, again, his day off. And so, he offered to take me to the dentist. So, I let him. <laughs> and that was our second date. He took me to the dentist, and then we came back to my sleepy little town of Yukaipa, and, um... We went to a place called Angus McCurdy's and had burgers and fries and um, just had a grand old time. And we have been inseparable since. We, we um, just, I, I think, I think I loved him from the moment I saw him standing on my porch with those damn roses. <laughs> uh, just... Yeah. <laughs> I just was sunk. 
just sunk. Uh, and he is the best thing that ever happened to me. He is a good, good man. Um, he takes good care of me. He loves me unconditionally. Uh, he just, he's an amazing human being, really and truly amazing human being. He's from Europe, so he has this great accent. Um, the, f the first time, <laughs> the first time my neighbor across the street met him, she was drunk. And she said to his face that she would have sex with him. But she didn't say it that nicely. She was a little bit more vulgar than that. <laughs> and he just laughed like it was not a big deal. And uh, we went on our way. <laughs> he, he's just such a good guy that nothing really phases him. Nothing really phases him. We um we we dated only for a few weeks. He. He, um, he was going through a divorce and selling his house and was going to move back to London with his parents and decided since we had met that he wouldn't do that, that he would find a place to live. So I, knowing that this was the man of my dreams and that, um, we were going to be together for a long time invited him to come live with me um i don't think i told you the date we met on january 29th 2018 and he moved in in like february 24th of 2018 so we didn't know each other a month when he moved in uh, but it just, it just felt right, you know? And I, I, at first, for those first few days was like, I don't know about this. I was unsure. I was uncomfortable. I was scared. Um, just because he was, he was intent in intense about, um, about pursuing me the way he pursued me. Um, was just, it was intense. <laughs> I, I don't have another word for it. Um, I, I think I told him I, on February 3rd, I went, I had to buy a new car and, uh, I went on February 3rd third or fourth I think it was the third and um my dad took me out to desert hot springs and I found this little convertible Solara and I fell in love with it um I I love driving a convertible and um I I bought it and of course the whole time that um, I'm at the showroom buying the car. Kevin and I are texting back and forth and I bought the car and was on the way home. And he said to me, you know, do you like the car? And I said, um, I love this car almost as much as I love you. And that was the first time one of us said, I love you. And, uh, I have no idea what his reaction was like outside of him telling me that he loved me too. Uh, cause we haven't ever really talked about it, but, uh, I know he was glad that I said it first. I think he had wanted to say it and didn't want to scare me off. And so, um, he, he didn't, <laughs> which is good. Cause that it would have probably scared me. It would have probably scared me to to have him tell me he loved me um, so soon in the relationship. And I was, I said, I love this car almost as much as I love you. And I was kind of shocked at myself that I said it, you know, because I hardly knew this man. And, um, 
we we had we had hardly gotten together and here I am telling him confessing my love like what the heck <laughs> that's just insane but we went I I decided that we could go for our first overnight date on Valentine's Day of that year and um we went out to dinner and went to this nice hotel and in the middle of the night we're laying in bed and Kevin says I want you to be my wife and I said okay <laughs> and that's how we got engaged um and we got married on January 19th of 2019 his mom's birthday and consequently the day, the day we met January 29th 2018 was my dad's birthday so I have these dates in my head because they're the birthday of the people I love and we chose to get married on his mom's birthday on purpose so that he wouldn't forget our anniversary <laughs> But we're, we're very happily married. We're, you know, we've had some, uh, we've had some challenges in that, you know, cancer struck and COVID struck. Um, he, he works at Disneyland and, um, was out of work from Disneyland for, right out a year because of COVID and that was a little bit rough for him because he's a goer and a doer and he's he likes to be busy when he's at work he walks like 20,000 steps a night um he just sitting and not having anything to do was kind of hard for him and he he took it like a champ happy every day happy every single day uh he just and he makes me laugh every day he just brings so much joy to my life and i'm so grateful for him and i'm i'm grateful for amy for you know talking me into going out with this man you know or not going out with this man but trying again um even though i was scared and angry and hurt um i i'm grateful that amy talked me into it otherwise i wouldn't have met kevin and i wouldn't have the love of my life and he really he really truly is the love of my life i thought that my kid's husband was my kid's dad was the love of my life but you know no he's not uh that situation didn't work out i <clears throat> I am grateful for him and for the children that he gave me, like, totally grateful. We have great kids, um, but, uh, circumstances being what they are, our relationship never would have worked out long term. We were married for 20 years, so you, you, I would say that's long term, but, um, I think we were only married that long because I wasn't willing to give up. And he, I, he, he had, you know, committed to me and to taking care of me and the kids. And so he wasn't going to leave. So, you know, it took, it took a catastrophic event for me to finally say, okay, this isn't working. I'm leaving. And I took the kids and I moved to California from Oklahoma. Uh, because because uh, I, circumstances predicated that I take care of the kids and that they not be around their dad. Which is really sad, but that has that situation has been remedied, 
and he has he has the ability to be around them again so plus they're adults so um they don't need me to protect him protect them from bad behavior anymore they can protect themselves uh <laughs> that's that's so vague <laughs> i'm sorry i just I don't really want to get into the details. I don't want to. I don't want to badmouth my ex-husband, uh, especially not in such a public forum. And I feel like I've already badmouthed him by saying what I've said. So uh, we're not going to talk about it anymore. Uh, but I will tell you this: he is gay, and. Um, he is now married to a lovely man who who we all think is just a sweetheart um and uh he's very very happy and i am happy that he is happy uh, because i don't think in the 20 years that we were married i don't think he was really happy at all because he was living a living a a lie um you know, a gay man married to a woman, just, it just doesn't work, it just doesn't work, and, uh, bless his heart, he was trying to do the right thing, so, anyway, it's very, very sad, I'm not sad, I'm a happy girl, I, my life is so good, it's not even funny, you know, and I know I've told you that I, I am recovering from cancer. Um, cancer is no joke, man. It is no joke. Uh, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Uh, just, oh, that's really bright. Okay, we're going to go with it. Um, just chemo alone will take you to your knees it just is brutal and um i'm so grateful for the med miracle of modern medicine because without it i wouldn't be alive today the the cancer that i had well i still am fighting um because I still, for those of you that don't know, I'm, I still take chemo meds and I'm still in treatment for my cancer. And uh, you're not considered cured until you've been in remission for five years. And it's been, April 15th will be a year since my last chemo. So it's just been a year for me. Oh, that's so cute. I was a little bit afraid of this bright pink, but I think it's cute. Um... Yeah, it's, it's only been a year, so I'm still considered not cured. <clears throat> I don't know how I got on that subject. I just, I've been talking in circles. Talking in circles, talking in circles. I have a flesh-colored, um... I have a flesh color alcohol ink marker coming because the flesh color alcohol ink marker that I currently have is kind of crummy, but we're going to use it because she looks funny without having her face and her feet and her hands colored in. She's very, very pale. My little fairy princess. I don't know if she's a princess, but well, she's got a star on her head. She can be a princess. She can be a princess. And I think I want to make the hooves on this unicorn gray. There we go. I don't want to color the unicorn in. I just want to leave the unicorn white 
have a little bit of white space. Mm, I think that's all the coloring I'm going to do on that. I, I think I'm satisfied with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chalk and this blender and I'm going to blend out these. It's so harsh. This These lines are harsh. So I'm just going to blend a little chalk out there on there and soften it up give it a little more it's a little more whimsical with this chalk so i hope you aren't totally bored with my crazy stories and my coloring and <laughs> I hope that you guys find some joy and entertainment in what we're talking about and what we're doing. You know, life can be hard sometimes. And um, it's important to find things that bring you joy, even during the hard times. I, uh, I have a sign in my living room that says something to the effect of, do something every day that makes you happy. And I believe that that is so important to do every, something every day, one thing every day that makes you happy or that brings you joy. Um, otherwise, life is just such a drudgery. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want my life to be a drudgery. I'm I'm not. I'll be t I'll be totally honest with you. These cards are kind of cute, but they're boring for me. Um, <laughs> they're, the finished product, I think, is very, very simple and boring. And I like to do, um, I like to do things that are a little bit more um, busy, for lack of a better word. Something I keep in my craft room. Uh, I showed you before, I think, is baby wipes. Baby wipes are really important. Uh, I use them to clean my splat mat. The other thing I keep are tissues so I can dry my splat mat and so I can blow my nose when it's running. Um, so, I'm going to take this. This is Balmy Blue by Stampin' Up. It's a 8.5 by five and a half piece of paper and I'm going to score it along the eight and a half side at four and a quarter and I'm going to score it on both sides because I like to it's not necessary but I like to and then we're going to fold it in half just Fold it in half. I don't know if I finished any of my stories today. I think I just left you guys hanging. If I if I didn't finish my stories, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me and write in the comments. Um, hopefully you liked this video. And if you did, uh, smash the like button. Give me a follow. Uh, I'd love to sit with you and tell you more stories as I make cards and craft we're just gonna put this on here as best we can and voila we made a card together thank you thank you for being here thank you for watching uh i just love you guys to bits and pieces i gotta sign my card and i've got to uh, I think I've told you before that Stampin' Up! has an angel policy and you have to stamp one of their stamps from their angel policy stamp collection. Uh, and this is one of them. This little created by. So uh, that's if you're going to sell your cards. You don't have to use those if you're not going to sell your cards. But I sell my cards. So I sell my cards at happymailbyleanne.com. I do custom cards. Uh, so if you have something in particular you want to see or that you want specially made, just reach out to me via the website 
or here and we can work it out um i don't think that's anything i don't think i have anything else to uh to share with you today thank you for watching i love having you here and we'll talk to you soon